email that um, I received recently. Sure. And this is from someone who believes themselves to be very rational and logical. Yes. And I just thought perhaps I'd read a few of their statements. Sure. Um, and it, we can just um, show how illogical someone who thinks they're quite logical can be. Yes. Um, yep. And I would certainly put And this is a person who's listened to Divine Truth for six years or so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, this person's saying, I need to work through the feeling that if 90% of a teacher's class, and this is with reference to yourself, yes. um, isn't progressing after years of trying, mm -hmm. then at least some of this must reflect on the quality of the teaching. Already there's an illogical statement mm -hmm. because it's also possible from a logical perspective that they think they're trying when they're not actually trying. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's also possible. Yes, yes. But, but that's not stated, of course. No. No. Uh, and... Sorry. <laughs> that's all right. That's all right. If we just continue the... Yeah. Uh, I intellectually understand mm -hmm. that although we may have spent decades searching for spiritual truth and on dedicated spiritual paths, that we may still not be prepared to do what needs to be done. Well, see, again, I feel... There's this focus on what needs to be done rather than a focus on needing to become more loving. Mm -hmm. and, and this is a part of the problem, is that the mind says, give me the rules and I'll go and do them. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> right? yeah. But the soul often is incapable of doing them unless you release certain emotions that prevent you from taking certain actions. Mm -hmm. This is an example of how the soul is governing the mind and yet the mind believes itself to be taking an action that the soul has not engaged. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. and even this, but even this idea that 90% of a teacher's class, yep. if they're not progressing, then that must reflect on the quality of the teaching. That to me seems to overlook a huge ingredient and that is the will of those in the class. Correct. It's actually stating that the teacher is in charge of the will of the student. Which is incorrect, obviously. Yeah, yeah. that's illogical to me. Yes, if we took this logic to, its, to the logic that he is using here yeah. to its full conclusion, God is the worst teacher of the universe. Yeah. <laughs> because, because hardly anybody in the whole universe is actually absorbed most of the information God's willing to provide. Mm -hmm. So that means that uh, under using this analogy, we're basically saying that, uh, that God is the worst teacher in the universe because hardly anybody knows anything about what God knows. In spite of God creating an entire universe, which is designed to teach us Correct. about ourselves and about him. Correct. Yeah. And again, it also minimises the use of our will. Yeah. It also minimises this quality of humility. Yeah. Obviously, we're unable to learn, even if we think we're able to learn, we're unable to learn unless we have true humility. Yeah. The majority of people that, I've, that I feel who are associated with divine truth have yet to develop true humility. Mm. And so they think they know things they don't know yet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I feel this, this fellow is in exactly the same boat. He thinks he knows things that he doesn't know yet. And then he blames me for not understanding them correctly or not being able to feel the benefits of them. Yeah. And of course, you can't feel the benefits of something the soul hasn't grown with. Yeah. So sure, he says he understands intellectually. And I feel those two words should never be placed together. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the reason why I feel that is because um, when we say to ourselves, I understand intellectually something, but mm -hmm. really, we don't even understand it intellectually. Because yeah. the intellectual understanding of something is only possible once the soul is free to actually understand it and therefore pass on its understanding to the intellect. Yep. And this is a part of the problem that people face is they keep telling themselves they understand something when it's only, they've only heard it. Yes. They don't understand it. No. They haven't applied it in their day-to-day -day life. They've only heard it. Yep. And hearing something doesn't cause change. No. But it's a part of something that can trigger change, yeah. but it doesn't cause change. Change yeah. is caused by, as we will discuss later, yeah. the soul being engaged yes. through a process. Yes. And I suppose what struck me between the eyes was a person was saying to me, and they say later in their, their message to me, that they are quite logical or they refer to their logic. Yeah. Um, and ration, rationalising. Yeah, and but, uh, but every statement rational. we've read so far 
is illogical. <laughs> That's yes, the irony. <laughs> yes, and to me, I, I suppose it struck me that someone who has attended six years of lectures which speak about the very things that you spoke of about the necessity for the soul to be engaged and the necessity for the will to be engaged and the fact that you will never attempt to coerce the will of a student, Correct. I call it a student. Or force the will of a student. Or, or force, coerce or manipulate or, manipulate or anything. Or <laughs> egg on because yeah, the yeah. whole point is for each student to engage their will Correct. with God and not with you. Correct. So then I can't see how they can see that it's a logical statement to say then if 90% of them aren't doing that, that that's your fault. Correct. When in fact... Because I'm doing it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, and if, every, if somebody follows the teachings that I'm given, then they'd probably finish up doing it if yeah. they really follow it in their soul. Yes. But yeah. see, this is the trouble is most people will think they're following it, but they're only, they've only heard it. Yeah. They haven't followed it yet. Yeah. And they only try to take actions without there being any soul-based change. Yeah. And what we're trying to do in this particular session is explain to people why they are stagnant. Yes. The reason why they're stagnant, and in fact the reason why this man is stagnant, is for this exact reason. He yeah. does not understand how the soul works, and as a result, he has yet to engage the soul's operations, yeah. and as a result, he can't practice divine truth, even though he thinks he wants to. Yeah. Yeah, and this is, I suppose, also obviously engaging with that soul process is about developing humility and growing ourselves in love. And when that doesn't happen, then we can think we're being logical when, in fact, there is no logic in no. our statements. No, and the reality is if we took this man's statements as logical, then it logically follows that God is the worst teacher of the universe. And I definitely cannot agree with that. No. Because that God is the person who hardly anybody listens to. <laughs> <laughs> and hardly anybody follows what God suggests. Yeah. yeah. And I would, no, I would certainly not then say that God is the worst teacher of the universe as a result. Well, even because we know God has created not just a class or a classroom or a lecture, an entire, entire universe universes, that is universes. to teach. <laughs> universes. And that any person within it, regardless of their age, their race, even their, even their intellect, even their intellect, can begin to learn about God without anyone else being around them. Correct. Now, to me, that's a pretty awesome teacher. Yeah. But if we begin to measure the value of teachers based on the will of their students... To me, that's not logical. Yeah. I just can't understand how that's logical. Yeah. And let's look at the way teaching occurs on the planet. Generally, the way teaching occurs on the planet is that it only occurs when there is a goal at the end. Mm -hmm. and, and this is where I feel a lot of people struggle with divine truth too because there is no real end goal. It's, it's, it's infinite progression that mm. is the goal. So therefore, you will always be changing. Uh, whereas what most people are used to is have a two or three year class and then they get a certificate yes. and that's the whole reason why they did it in the first place. Yes. In other words, they did it for an addictive reason. They wanted an, a, a result at the end that they could conceive and they only did it for that purpose. And the reality is if we are taking that approach with divine truth, we're never going to learn it mm -hmm. because it has to be driven by a desire for the relationship with God yeah. rather than a desire for any end goal other than that that, that we might achieve. And as a result, there's no addictions that are ever going to be fed through the process. Yeah, yeah and humility is the state of embracing constant learning, constant receipt of new truth from yeah. God, from those around us, learning from everything around us. It's yeah. saying living in a state of humility, which is the part, a significant part of the way. And most people means, have yet to understand what that means. Yeah, yeah, well, but it does mean we are perpetually saying, I want more knowledge, I don't have it all. Yes. <laughs> Yes. So as soon as we get into this... But it's not just more knowledge. You see, and this is where we've got to be careful. Yes. We're not... See, this is where the people like this man who have focused their life on the, the, on the absorption of more intellectual knowledge yeah. really struggle with divine truth. Yeah. They believe that they have spiritual development because their mind tells them so. Mm -hmm. But the reality is the spirit, true spiritual development is about love. Yeah. This is... The whole, the, how the soul functions is all about love. Mm. It's not about the intellect. And so you can tell yourself things with your intellect that have no bearing whatsoever on the true condition of your soul. Yeah. And, and, and it's only its development in love that is going to cause any change. And unless you're willing to develop your soul in love, either natural love or God's love, 
your soul will not change mm. and it doesn't matter how good the teacher is <laughs> you will not do it yeah. because because of your own resistance and other issues that we need to discuss about how the soul functions yeah i suppose i feel now that any knowledge is not real unless it is in the soul it's correct just, that's it's what just i mean a, it's by it's just a thought knowledge. it's not it's, it's just something we've heard yeah it means nothing no. actually and it has no impact or bearing generally on our lives either if we've just heard it yeah. I have about six years of university education and um, I often used to joke about the things that I've learnt and forgotten are amazing, you know, yeah. I've learnt and forgotten a lot of things which shows that I didn't receive it in, in, the, soul. in the soul, I was just memorising and regurgitating. And, Correct. Yeah. Because once you really learn something, it's in your soul permanently, it ne you yeah. never lose it, yeah. you, know, you know, it never goes away. And if it's truth, divine truth, it never goes away. Yeah. If it's error mixed with truth, then obviously it's refined. Yeah. But, uh, but, it, but yeah, if you truly learn something in your soul, it never really goes away. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. thank you for that. So you can't lose your memory of it. Yeah. <laughs> well, and, you know, professionally, you also know that the things that you have experience with, yeah. it's, and this is why I think a lot of people criticise university education, because you do a lot of theory before practice a yeah. lot of times. And, but you know that once you've had a practical application of some of the things... It's much it, easier to remember. You, you retain it. Correct. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, it's now in your experience, in yes. your soul's experience. Yes. Yeah. And this is why... It, it's, I, I find it quite ironic, really, is because that a lot of the things that people know about learning and teaching are actually where they have engaged their soul in some direction without actually understanding how the soul works. Yeah. If you really understood how the soul works... You could teach the soul far faster yes. and more effectively than yeah. what we currently are able to teach the soul yeah. of the humans, of yeah. humans. Yeah. So, so it's very important for us to understand these principles because it's going to affect, like it's going to affect every area of our life, but it's going to affect how even education is embraced mm. Mm. if people understood these principles. Yeah, yeah. 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 I get a bit, uh, I think it's, it's kind of crazy when people criticise you as a teacher because I watch you, you're humble, you um, embrace, you live the example of what you teach, mm. but you also constantly attempt to find a point of engagement with people mm -hmm. without altering their will. It's just a point, and mm. many good teachers do that. Mm. God does that, mm. is constantly trying to find a point of engagement yeah. with the person. And that doesn't mean the teacher made a mistake with the previous point of engagement. <laughs> no. What it means is the teacher who loves you and he cares about you and he wants to try to work out a way that he can get yes. some information into your soul yes. <laughs> with, yes. and try to work around a lot of your resistances and denials. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Anyway, yeah. let's continue. Sure.